First thing I'm going to do is uh, show you a solar panel. Um, so on this desk actually we have a solar panel right here um, and uh, the black surface in the middle are uh, the uh, solar modules and uh, they convert the sunlight that's coming in here uh, into electricity and they create a DC current uh, which is direct current. Um, so then with solar panels in order to use it on the grid or uh, with uh, conventional appliances, you have to convert that DC current to AC or alternating current. And you do that with a, a device called an inverter. But the most basic thing is you've got a solar panel uh, like this that can be quite a bit larger. Uh, this particular one generates 15 watts um, per hour when it's uh, peak um, sunlight at its optimal angle and so on and in fact if you change the angle of the uh, solar panels it will actually uh, generate more electricity if it's at a direct uh, right angle to the sun basically uh, so that's the optimal uh, but obviously as the sun goes across the sky during the day and goes higher into the sky the the angle changes and that changes the amount of electricity that can be created the other thing with solar panels is you can have uh, many of these solar panels uh, joined up in, in a series or parallel connection. So you can have 10, 20, 30, 40 of these connected in a row. And then depending on how you wire them, you can transform uh, the 12 volts into 24 volts uh, and so on by uh, serial or parallel connections. So what I'm going to do is, you can see it's uh, generating, it's showing uh, 20 volts. Um, and then when I put this over the panel, you can see that obviously if you have some kind of shading from uh, a tree or, or branches and things like that, um, it's going to cause uh, the voltage to be reduced. So we want to try and keep it away from shading. And in fact, uh, depending on the angle that uh, you actually have the panels, it's going to generate more or less uh, electricity. So getting that uh, to be optimal for the sun is, is also a good idea. So typically somewhere between 35 and 45 degrees angle is uh, what we use in, in Canada. Here's the solar panels that we have up on the roof. Um, we've actually got two sets of uh, panels. We've got Array 1 here. Uh, down below that's array 2 um, that we've set up so two different types of solar panels um, sharp down below there on the far side and then on the top side here we've got some shell which are formerly uh, Siemens uh, solar panels uh, each with different ratings uh, in terms of what uh, voltage and what uh, wattage uh, that they put out Okay, we're down in the utility room in the basement of the house. Uh, what happens uh, with the uh, new solar panels on the feed-in tariff that we've got, the sharp solar panels that generate 120 watts each, we've got 10 of them, so uh, they generate uh, 1,200 watts or 1 1.2 kilowatts of electricity. The electricity from these actually comes in from the outside of the house on this uh, this wire here, we pipe it in on this wire from the outside of the house. They drill the hole through the outside of the foundation, and then that comes in here, and there's actually an on-off switch over here. Uh, and then that uh, DC current goes into this inverter, and the inverter here converts that DC current, direct current, into AC, or alternating current. And there's a white wire that comes up here on this side, and actually goes uh, towards the far side of the basement here out to a new uh, meter that measures generated electricity for the feed-in tariff. So a second meter um, that is only for measuring generation. So we're on the outside of the house um, looking at the meters. Um, we have two meters to do the feed-in tariff. Um, on the left side here is the import meter. That's the meter that measures consumption of electricity in the house. Um, this is a, a meter that actually has what they call two registers. So it's able to measure uh, consumption incoming electricity that we're consuming. But if there's any excess electricity coming out of the house um, on what they call a net meter configuration, 
um, then that electricity would be measured on the second register and you'll see that in a sec when we show the meter up close it flips between the two registers showing how many kilowatts has been consumed and how many kilowatts have been generated and pumped back into the grid on this uh, consumption or import meter. In order to do the feed-in tariff we've added this second meter this is the export meter and it measures every kilowatt that our solar panels generate uh, so each kilowatt that they generate is measured on this uh, meter and uh, in this case we're in a series connection so that uh, wire goes back into the electrical panel inside the house and we consume that electricity uh, directly inside the house through the electrical panel. This is a close-up of the export meter. You can see it's registering 145. That's 1,450 uh, kilowatts of electricity that we've generated in the first 10 months, essentially, of having the uh, sharp 120-watt uh, uh, panels up there. We've got 10 of them, so they generate uh, about 1,200 uh, watts uh, per hour um, when the sun is shining at Peak. So now that you've got uh, some basic uh, research done uh, and you've got an understanding of how solar works and uh, some of the visuals of what an actual fit type connection, feed-in tariff connection would uh, be like, uh, you've kind of completed step one of the sort of five steps that uh, you might consider for getting in on the feed-in tariff program in Ontario. Um, you should also probably be starting to look at getting quotes for the type of system that you want to install on your house or your commercial building. Uh, the next step would be typically to uh, start the contracting process on the OPA website. Uh, it's pretty simple to start filling in the forms uh, online and you can then save that information as you go along. Uh, and you can apply uh, for the final application once you've finalized the solar configuration that you're planning to install um, with the correct details in terms of kilowatts and the type of inverter and sizing and so on. Um, the next step would be to actually install and build and configure the uh, solar system. Um, and for that phase, basically the solar system provider uh, does all of the work, uh, including providing a stand for the new generation meter. Um, so the solar panels can be fully installed, configured, and connected, basically. So what would happen then is typically the um, utility company would be uh, contacted. They'd be contacted before as well to get information uh, on the connection process. Um, you'd want to schedule to have the new generation meter installed by the LDC, the utility company, and uh, they will work with you to do that once the solar system is ready. With the solar system ready and your new meter ready, um, it is possible to have the Electrical Safety Authority come and inspect your system and uh, confirm that it is uh, to the right specifications and the labeling is all done correctly. Make sure your solar provider knows how to do the labeling correctly. Uh, once that's completed, you can then provide to the utility and to the OPA um, the document that says you are ready to go into production. Um, different utilities have different names for that but it basically just informs them that the system is ready to go. And uh, once you get confirmation that they accept that, um, you can then uh, turn your system on. Uh, the OPA will uh, start to uh, enforce and accept your contract at that point in time, and uh, you will be connected to the grid. Um, and so once all of that is completed, you are then uh, a contract holder on the feed-in tariff program with the OPA. The utility uh, will actually manage the payment process. Uh, typically, at least in Hydro One's case, they pay out quarterly, and that's done through an automatic um, uh, payment electronic funds transfer to your bank account.